Since I didn't cover the RPG news last month, I'll be going over everything from July and August in this video instead. A lot happened in these two months, so this video will jump between news items fairly quickly. If you're interested in something in particular, make sure to look at the timestamps and the links in the description below. Also, before we start going through the news, I want to mention a few things related to my own projects. I started an Instagram, but I don't really know yet what to use it for, but there's a link to it in the description below if you're interested. I also recommend that you follow me on Twitter. I only use Twitter sporadically and I don't have any followers there, but it's a good way to get information out of viewers, especially since I need a thousand subs in order to post messages here on YouTube. Also, I'm still working on revisions to Machineborn after the playtesting feedback, and uh, previews of those revisions are posted on my Patreon every month. If you're interested in Machineborn, I recommend that you check out my Patreon. For only $1 a month, you get access to all of my Machineborn previews, and your name gets credited in any PDF I'm working on during the time you're a patron. With that said, on to the news. With several conventions having already been cancelled or moved online this year, it's unsurprising that more will do the same. The UK's biggest gaming event, EGX, was scheduled to take place September 17-20 to 20 in London. It will instead be replaced by a digital event called EGX Digital, and it will run from September 12-20. to 20. It will be a free event in collaboration with PAX Online. Another affected convention is Board Game Geek's BGGCon 2020, which has been an annual event since 2005, and it was to be held in November 18 to 22 this year. BGG did hold their second virtual gaming con, the VGC, in late June together with the Dice Tower, where more than 30 publishers, 250 game hosts, and 1,800 guests participated. The VGC, like many other gaming conventions, relied on the Tabletop Events TTE platform, which has been having some financial problems throughout the year. This is a tabletop game convention management system that's been used for a number of conventions both in real life and online. Because of how impressed BGG has been with the TTE platform, they announced a deal to take over its operations and keep running it for future events. TTE founder JT Smith stays on as a consult and expressed in BGG's newsletter that the agreement we have struck with BGG not only ensures tabletop events as a future beyond 2020, but that it will be a vibrant future. BGG director of events Jeff Anderson will now oversee operations of TTE, and he states that he is excited about using the TTE platform to create and support virtual gatherings where we can still see each other and play together. Despite the pandemic, tabletop RPGs have apparently made more money on Kickstarter in the first half of 2020 than ever before. ICO CEO Thomas Bido posted on Twitter that there had been a substantial drop in launched projects and that the total number of Kickstarter projects hasn't been this low since 2012. However, the number of projects being successfully funded increased in 2020 after having consecutively decreased on a year-by-year -year basis. For tabletop RPGs in particular, May 2020 became the category's biggest ever month on Kickstarter, raking in over $33 million. Frosthaven alone made almost 13 of those millions. According to Bedo, crowdfunding campaigns on Kickstarter have been affected by the corona crisis, with fewer projects being launched across almost all categories. On the flip side, he says, the campaigns that do launch can still perform very well, and it seems that there is no strong effect on campaigns that get funded or for projects' ability to become hits. Hollywood actor and tabletop nerd Joe Manganello partnered with Omaze to gather donations for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Participants who donated had an opportunity to meet the Wizards of the Coast team and play Dinosaur and Dragons with Manganello in Seattle, with flights and hotel costs included. After four months of donations, over $608,000 was earned, which will grant more than 56 wishes to children with critical illnesses. The winner of the competition, Kylie McGann, was announced at the end of July. If it weren't for Matt Colville's YouTube channel, I probably wouldn't have made this one. 
Even though I do a lot of different RPG related stuff on here, my original ambition was to become the Matt Caldwell of Exalted. That didn't really happen, but I've enjoyed where things have gone and what I've produced so far. On the subject of Matt Caldwell though, transition. His company MCDM is working on a new D&D magazine called Arcadia, featuring many writers within the industry. James Introcasso, who has also worked on Critical Role's Explorer's Guide to Wild Mount and Roll 20's Burn Bright, is managing editor of the magazine, and it will be sold over Patreon. He made a tweet in early August announcing that for a few months I've been working with MCDM on something fun that is going to give a lot more writers a chance to work with this incredible company. Pleased to announce that I am the managing editor of Arcadia, a new D&D magazine from MCDM. In one of Colwell's videos, he explains that there will be three issues of Acadia and that each can be bought for $5 on Patreon, with each issue being 2,500 to 3,000 words. After the first three issues, they'll stop and review the reception before deciding whether or not they'll publish more. This year's Diana Jones Award, an annual prize that recognizes excellence in the tabletop gaming industry, has been given to black designers, creators and other members of the industry in recognition of black excellence in gaming. Instead of celebrating individual games, the awards throw a spotlight on trends, people, concepts and anything else that represents excellence in gaming. The 2020 Danny Jones Award, which marks the 20th anniversary of the prize, listed more than two dozen black professionals from the tabletop industry, some of which include Blood Rage designer Eric Lang, cyberpunk creator Mike Pondsmith, Dice Tower contributor Mandy Hutchinson and more. Tabletop writer, creator and designer Misha Bushjager retracted her acceptance of being named as an honoree with concerns over the handling of the announcement. She stated that, I think the choice to highlight black excellence in gaming, especially with the groundswell that's happening right now, is a laudable decision. Had the committee stopped there, I probably would not have said anything. But the committee went further than that and A defined who in the community of black gaming professionals they deemed excellent without input from the community, B did so in secret without any transparency to their decisions, and C created a second class status for the black honorees. She raised many more valid concerns in her blog, which is linked in the description below. The Any Awards are given to the best tabletop RPGs of the year as voted by the public, and they've been held regularly since 2001. Last year's winners included games such as Kids on Bikes, Call of Cthulhu, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, and Mothership. Publisher Massive Press behind mech RPG Lancer withdrew its 2020 nomination in response to the lamentations of the Flame Princess supplement Blood in the Chocolate receiving an Emmy Award for Best Adventure back in 2017. I am not familiar with the game, but it's said to include casual graphic sexual assault and racism. In response to Lancer pulling out, the Emmy Awards added Uncaged Volume 3 for Dinosaur Dragons 5th Edition, which is known for subverting stereotypical depictions of female mythological creatures. The awards were hosted by aforementioned Misha Bushjager, Ken Height, Robin D. Laws, Mike Pondsmith and Chris Spivey, and they took place on July 31st. Among the biggest winners was Mörk Borg, a dark RPG inspired by Swedish metal, which received awards in all four categories it was nominated in. Gold Prize in Product of the Year, Best Writing, Best Layout and Design, as well as Silver in Best Game. The Alien RPG was named the Best Game of the Year and it definitely earns that spot. Check out my deep dive of the game here on this channel. Both Merc Boy and the Alien RPG are published by Free League Publishing. Green Ronin announced the Chronicle System Guild for drive through RPG, which allows third-party publishers to make and sell Chronicle System games, similar to White Wolf Storyteller's Vault, where I published a thing and will publish more. The Chronicle System is primarily used for Sword Chronicle, which is basically a relaunch of the system since they no longer have the license to continue the Game of Thrones RPG. However, this system doesn't let you create content using the Game of Thrones license, but you could go the same route as many publishers do with the OGL and uh, omit certain names and themes to avoid the license. The plan was to release the service as World Chronicle became available in mid-August. According to Green Ronin's Malcolm Shepard, the game is selling well and they are getting a lot of inquiries about possible POD options for the game. The plan is to release Sword Chronicle as a POD, but they don't know 
when that will happen. For those who already have the game on PDF, they'll be able to get a discount on the POD when it comes. And on the subject of community content sites, Nomnivore Games was hit hard by COVID-19 because they got their RPG development budget mainly from convention sales. However, they've continued their work on their Ember Wind RPG, which is a GM optional game using this setting independent WISE system. The Emberwind team is now planning to launch a content creation site called Nexus, which users will be able to use to create custom content for the game. They launched a beta of Nexus earlier this month. I played the original Swedish cult from 1991 many years ago, but I have so far not been able to try out the latest installment Cult Divinity Lost by Helen Gast. It's a horror game set in our own world and focuses a lot on religion and morality. The newest installment was published in 2018 and had a successful Kickstarter. Helm Gust will be releasing a collection of scenarios called Screams and Whispers, one of which is written by horror author Anders Fager, who writes Cthulhu-inspired horror fiction and has contributed to other role-playing games such as Call of Cthulhu and Tales from the Loop. Other scenarios feature writers such as Matthew Dawkins and Matthew Sanderson from World of Darkness, novelist Tofer Burke, and original Swedish cult creators Gunilla Jonsson and Mikael Petersen. The scenario had a successful Kickstarter over the summer and are estimated to be released sometime in February 2021. Publisher Rebellion Unplugged has announced a line of tabletop RPGs designed to be more accessible to players. Adventure is a series of games presented in magazine format, with each magazine featuring a complete role-playing game. The first game, Adventure Presents Tartar's Gate, is written by Grant Howitt and Chris Taylor, who have worked together on games such as Spire and Heart. Howitt is also known for creating the game Honey Heist about criminal bears. Adventure Presents Tartar's Gate is set in year 2130 aboard the transport ship Caron as it makes a cargo run from Earth to Tartar's Gate way station. Players take the roles of unpaid interns used primarily for menial tasks before things escalate into a horror RPG. The kickstart for the game ran smoothly for 14 days in July and the game PDFs have already reached backers in late August. The Green Knight movie starring Dev Patel and Alicia Vikander is getting its own tabletop RPG published by A24, which also released the horror films Hereditary and Midsummer, the latter being a movie that I hate with a passion. The game is inspired by the film, which in turn is inspired by the medieval poem, and it features a story where the player set out on a journey to confront the Green Knight. The game originally launches as a starter set called The Quest for Honor, which includes a Game Master's Guide, the world map, and a special green D20. There are five character sheets for players to choose from, with archetypes such as Bard, Knight, and Noble. The game was originally intended to release earlier in the year, but was delayed because of COVID-19. August saw the successful Kickstarter campaign of one of the most original tabletop RPGs to come out as of late. Yang Shi Blood in the Banquet Hall by Wet Ink Games takes place in a 1920s American Chinatown and tells a story of a Chinese family who opens up their own restaurant in the US. Family members begin suffering from terrible dreams and the local community are whispering about the arrival of the dreaded Yang Shi, a vampire of legend which feeds on the living and turns them into the undead. This is a tabletop RPG with board game elements with different cards being used to represent tasks and events. Monster Care Squad is a tabletop RPG inspired by Studio Ghibli in which the players are vets who must heal the monster inhabitants of a fantasy world. The players diagnose the monster's condition by investigating areas and interacting with NPCs. Once they've made their diagnosis, they come up with spells, potions and other plans to heal the creature. Successfully healing a monster could offer blessings and rewards for future sessions. The game focuses on narrative play and is inspired by the relationship between nature and humankind as explored in many Ghibli films, such as Princess Mononoke. The game had a successful Kickstarter that ended in early August. Another game inspired by Studio Ghibli is Wonder Home, an RPG that turns players into animals exploring a peaceful world. The game sees players telling a collective story about the world of Haith, a land populated by animal people called the Kith. Despite having suffered hardships and wars in the past, the Kith now live in harmony with one another and the land itself. One thing that makes this game stand out is that it's GM agnostic. The players can decide to either have a guide to help lead the story or drive the narrative entirely themselves. The game currently has a successful Kickstarter and is still live at the making of this video. 
Netflix's The Dragon Prince is getting a tabletop RPG powered by Cortex Prime called Tales of Xadia. Fandom, which runs systems like D&D Beyond, has recently bought Cortex and they will run the Cortex Creator Studio as a hub for third-party authors to create their own appropriately licensed Cortex games, similar to how Wizard of the Coast uses the DMs Guild. Following up on Fandom and Cortex, they have under license from Mattel unwield the Masters of the Universe role-playing game Legends of Greyskull for the Cortex RPG engine. With more than 25 years since Lost He-Man related RPG was released, it's now due time for a new one. However, it seems like Fandom has more planned than simply a game, most likely inspired by their D&D Beyond platform. The game lets players create characters to explore the realm of Eternia and It'll feature a multifaceted approach to role-playing by utilizing the core game, a digital companion and toolset, a community content creation and sharing platform, and an organized play program meant to connect fans. In Spirals is a fantasy RPG from Hatchlings, where traditional RPG mechanics have been pushed aside in favor of a system that teaches empathy, life skills and deaf awareness. The magic system itself teaches sign language and the book is written using dyslexia friendly fonts. The project had a successful Kickstarter and aims to deliver a 150 page premium color hardback. Manic Games, who made a Hellboy board game and a Dark Horse comics, announced a new Hellboy RPG made by Red Scar Publishing. It also has a Kickstarter that's still ongoing as of the making of this video. The game is based on Wizard of the Coast OGL for 5th edition and will draw directly from Mike Minola's comics. The players will be members of the Bureau for Paranormal Research and Defense, the BRPD, and investigate supernatural occurrences. Fantasy Flight Games is transferring its RPGs to sister studio Edge, but until then work continues on their products. Legend of the Five Rings will receive two more books announced by FFG. These are Fields of Victory, a book about warfare from the perspective of the Lion Clan and Blood of the Lioness, an adventure taking the samurai characters into the history of a battle on the snow plain. Both books are scheduled to be released in 2021. RPG designer Colin Cummings has released In Case of an Emergency, an RPG based on the video game Control. The game sees players as employees of Shady Corporation Foundation. As the result of a mysterious incident, the players find themselves locked inside a building and are tasked with solving the emergency by another Shady group called the Shareholders. The game is designed to be played as a one-shot taking between 2-4 to four hours and should have between 4 and 6 players, including the GM. The GM, known as the Director, determines one or more emergencies that the players must resolve in a given number of hours. This can range from minor occurrences such as multiplying office supplies to severe threats like collisions with alternate universes. Halfway through the game, the characters gain supernatural powers from the shareholders. Bully Pulpit Games released Fiasco Boxed Edition, a new version of the classic RPG, in August. This new edition provides a good entry point into the classic RPG as a beginner box and it incorporates redesigns based on what the design team has learned about bad plans and epic debacles since the last edition. EN World announced in August that they would develop an advanced take on the 5th edition rules for Dungeons and Dragons, with one of the criticisms of 5th edition being that while the streamlined rules make it more accessible, there are parts of the game that don't feel as streamlined and there are other parts of the game that could be more crunchy. EN World wants to see if these two concepts can be combined. They are calling the game Level Up and it's aimed to be backwards compatible with other 5th edition products. Adam Coble, co-author of award-winning tabletop RPG Dungeon World and former GM of Roleplay and Far Verona, was surrounded by controversy earlier in the year after, after he GM'd a sexual assault on the live show Far Verona. Because of the outrage that followed, Coble decided to step back from internet fame. As he had contributed to Modifius Dune RPG, the publisher made a statement in late July about how they would go forward. The statement says... After a discussion with Adam Coble, all parties involved have decided that it is best here with Science's ongoing projects with Modifius Entertainment. We have been following the events of Far Verona and Adam's conduct on the show, and we feel his journey toward rectifying the situation isn't yet complete. Adam's work for us was written over the winter of 2019 and was specifically about best practices for game masters, and we feel it pertinent that the work not be included and his participation in ongoing projects suspended. 
We are replacing his work using a small team of diverse writers that include women and people of color, writers who are already members of the team who have or will be creating material for our games. Consent and safety in role-playing games is an absolute necessity, and all of our role-playing games in the future will contain advice and guidance on those aspects for everyone at the table. The safety of our fans is of prime importance to us. Kobel gave his own perspective on his blog, stating that resigning reflects the best possible choice given the situation at hand. Kobel goes on to say that, while I am proud of the work I submitted for the game, it doesn't feel like the right choice to publish it. Ultimately, what matters most to me is that the game is something that everyone involved can be proud to release, and I believe that this is the best path to that goal. Since we're on the topic of Modifius, their RPG Star Trek Adventures has a brand new core rulebook called the Klingon Empire, which for the first time lets players create Klingon characters. The game lets players form their own spacefaring crew in order to explore the final frontier. Despite being a major race in the setting, previous games have only introduced Klingons as an optional NPC race and never as a playable one. The game is based on Modifius 2D20 system and is a fully independent 400 page core book focusing on dedicated Klingon roleplaying, with guidelines on Klingon culture and society, how to base campaigns around them, as well as introducing minor updates and improvements to the core rules that can be adapted to the original Star Trek adventures. Continuing on the topic of Star Trek Adventures, Modifius has released a free supplement letting players take the seemingly unwinnable Kobayashi Maru test, which was first depicted in the opening scene of the 1982 film Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. The test places Starfleet Academy cadets in a simulation of an apparently impossible situation where a civilian vessel called the Kobayashi Maru has become disabled within the Klingon neutral zone. The test provides a dilemma where entering the neutral zone threatens war and not entering threatens the crew of the Kobayashi Maru. The tabletop scenario lets the players assume the role of Starfleet Academy cadets taking the test. It's a free 15-page PDF containing a one-shot adventure and is designed to be used alongside the Star Trek Adventures core rulebook. Wizards of the Coast has put up a full-time job opportunity on their website for a new VP for Dungeons & Dragons. The VP's role is to lead the franchise with the goal of growing the audience and revenue worldwide, the job entails leading the expansion evolution of D&D, develop strategies, goals and roadmaps for content, mature the core IP, team and practices, etc. The VP needs to have 10 plus years of proven experience in business management, marketing management or product management and they need to meet other criteria as well. It's not as easy as simply to apply because you like D&D, but if you're interested there's a link to the full job description in the description below. Wizards of the Coast plans to release Curse of Strahd revamped, a boxed collector's edition of the popular 5th edition adventure on October 20. The gothic horror adventure will be broken down into three parts, a soft cover 224 page adventure book for characters of levels 1 to 10, with all the latest errata and a revised depiction of the Vistani, a 20 page creatures of horror booklet and an 8 page Taroka deck booklet. Everything comes in a coffin-shaped box, which also includes a dungeon master screen, a double-sided poster map of Barovia on one side and Castle Ravenloft on the other, as well as 12 postcards. The adventure was adapted from a first edition D&D module, originally called Ravenloft back in 1983. It's a horror-themed adventure set in the Forgotten Realms, where players receive an invite to Castle Ravenloft in order to dine with Count Strahd himself. Since its re-release in 2016, it's become one of the most iconic D&D 5th edition sourcebooks and has even earned an Emmy Award for Best Adventure. However, the book hasn't been without controversy. Most interesting to many is how the revised take on the Vistana will look, since the company has suffered criticism for certain stereotypical portrayals. Chris Perkins has said, We started this product in late or the middle of last year, so a lot of what Curse of Strahd revamped addresses are issues that we saw long before the recent discussions on social media and stuff like that. The recent stuff is going to translate to changes to other products down the road past this one. Wizards of the Coast has announced the D&D supplement Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, which will include expanded subclasses for all classes, including the Artificer. There are new class features and new feats, and players can customize their character's origin using straightforward rules for modifying characters' racial traits. 
There will be rules for group patrons, such as criminal syndicates or ancient dragons. There are more spells, as well as magic tattoos, artifacts and other magic items. The book has new rules for sidekicks, supernatural environments, natural hazards and parlaying with monsters. There is also guidance on how to run a session zero. Finally, the book offers puzzles of varied difficulty that you can drop in your adventures, complete with traps and guidance on how to use puzzles in a game. The book will be released in November 17. Over 30 years since its debut with 1st edition, the D&D adventure Castle Amber will be revised for 5th edition. This is an adventure in which players find themselves incarcerated in an ancient ancestral home once owned by the Amber Wizard family. The castle is home to gruesome creatures, including the spirits of the family members themselves. The publisher behind this adventure is Goodman Games, who are partnering with Wizards of the Coast in order to release it as part of its original Adventures Reincarnated series. RPG designer Sarah Thompson, who have contributed to games such as Artelsor and Games Witcher RPG, created a homebrewed combat wheelchair for 5th edition that took the internet by storm. The wheelchair can withstand high impact and even work as a weapon in itself, providing the user with means of both defense and attack. The most important part, I think, is that it lets more people be adventurers, especially in a genre where disability is often overlooked. Even in the aforementioned Curse of Strad is a disabled character, Esmeralda, but her representation has been criticized for her covering up her disability. In response to a tweet about that subject, Chris Perkins stated that they were going to fix that, likely in the revised version of the book. Sarah Thompson has been doing good work in creating disability content for role-playing games. I became aware of the combat wheelchair when reading my Twitter feed, where people were outraged over criticism to the combat wheelchair. I never saw much of the criticism myself, so I don't really know how widespread it was, or if it came from only a few individuals. I did see some tactless posts about how it would be cheaper for people with disability to pay a cleric to regenerate their limbs than buy a combat wheelchair, but those people seem to be missing the point. There were also criticism about the mechanics from people who thought it was too powerful, which is more valid. The reception overall is that Thompson has made a cool combat wheelchair and lots of people like it. She has also been putting a lot of effort into upgrading the homebrew with cleaner rules. It didn't take long until Miniatures of the Thing was announced with a portion of proceeds going towards charity. Miniatures sculptor Russ Charles worked with Thompson to create four miniatures based on the rules. These include a human druid, elf rogue, tiefling cleric and dwarf barbarian using the combat wheelchair. 25% of proceeds from the miniatures go to Ehlers Danlos Support UK. Wizards of the Coast announced late August that they'll be holding the online convention D&D Celebration 2020 from September 18 to 20, meaning that it'll clash with PAX Online. The event is meant to celebrate the release of Icewind Dale, Rime of the Frostmaiden, with a weekend of Icewind Dale themed virtual play sessions. Fans will also get a chance to preview content from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Money raised in the event goes to supporting the gamer charity Extra Life. At the end of July and beginning of August, Gen Con 2020 was held online and various tabletop game companies made their presence known for the convention. One such company was Paizo, which offered a total of 15 releases, one of which being the Advanced Player's Guide rulebook for Pathfinder 2nd Edition, which introduces the Investigator, Oracle, Swashbuckler and Witch classes, and plenty more. Another is the Starship Operations Manual for Starfinder, where players will be able to outfit their ships with more than 100 new weapons, expansion base, alternate armors, as well as systems like drop pods, ramming prowess, mines, virtual intelligences and more. Paizo also announced Secrets of Magic for Pathfinder 2nd Edition, a new rulebook containing rules for playing the Magus and Summoner classes. The Magus is one of Pathfinder's most popular classes, a hybrid warrior mage, and the Summoner class focuses on the ability to summon and control various monsters. The Summoner also bonds with an Eidolon that grows in power as they do. Secrets of Magic will be the second major expansion to Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Paizo is also releasing their third bestiary in Q2 of 2021, a 320-page rulebook that adds 300 monsters to the game. And since we're on the subject of Paizo, they have partnered with company Beadle & Grimm, who has also worked alongside Wizards of the Coast, and they are going to produce luxury versions of the products. 
One of the initial product lines will be character chronicles, which are character sheet books, scrapbooks, and journals. Paizo has also partnered with Amazon to create a Starfinder audio game that you can play on your Alexa. This is a multi-part interactive audio adventure featuring voices from actors such as Nathan Fillion and Laura Bailey, and it works by players issuing voice commands to their Alexa to progress the story. The game is supposed to feature up to 13 hours of gameplay. Paizo released a free-to-play pilot of the game last year and have upgraded it since. While the pilot episode is free, each additional episode will be $1.99, or you can buy the full season for $9.99. The game is available in the United States, United Kingdom, Canada, and Australia. Free League Publishing has released a brand new role-playing game line called Vasan Nordic Horror Role-Playing, based on the works of illustrator and author Johan Egekrans. In the Vasan RPG, players step into the roles of 19th century investigators in the mythic north. Having all been born with the sight, they can see things that others cannot. The game offers an exciting take on gothic folklore horror with a unique Nordic twist. The game is written by award-winning author Nils Hintz, who also worked on Tales from the Loop, and the game mechanics use an adapted version of the Year Zero engine. If you watch my deep dive of the Alien RPG, you know that I'm a huge fan of that game. I'm also a huge fan of the cinematic scenario Shared of the Gods. Free League Publishing has announced that the next cinematic scenario is called Destroyer Worlds and will be officially released on September 8. It's written by sci-fi author Andre Isigaska and will be launched alongside a new starter set for the game. In Destroyer Worlds, the players take the roles of colonial marines who are dropped onto the moon Ariorikus to handle a growing insurgency. But, as with any good alien story, things will escalate beyond their worst nightmares. Free League Publishing also launched the adventure module Crypt of the Mellified Mage for Forbidden Lands. This adventure lets players visit a dungeon of dripping honey, explore a firing pit for magical pottery, stand in awe of the Temple of the Monkey King, and go on a dissing tour through the mind of a mad mage. If you're unfamiliar with Forbidden Lands, it's a new take on classic fantasy role-playing where the players aren't heroes but instead raiders and rogues bent on making their own mark on a cursed world. Free League's Kickstarter for Twilight 2000, which I mentioned in a previous RPG News video, was funded in only 7 minutes. The game is a new edition of a classic role-playing game and it's published in partnership with Game Designers Workshop and Amargosa Press. Just like the original version released in 1984, the new edition is set in year 2000, devastated by war in an alternate timeline where the Moscow coup of 91 succeeded and the Soviet Union never collapsed. That's it for the news I want to cover from July and August this year. If you like this video and want to see more, make sure to like, comment, share and subscribe. And don't forget to follow me on social media as well. You'll find the links in the description below. Until next time.